Hey, what's up guys? So a bunch of new cards came out today and let's go ahead and jump into our first card, Speedroid Passing Glider. Now this is a jump card. I don't know when the heck or if we will get this in the TCG anytime soon. But anyways, let's check it out. So Speedroid Passing Glider, little five win machine type. It's a pendulum monster though. And so look at Speedroid's getting them pendulums. And it's got 2200 attack, 2000 defense. Uh, the pendulum effect is once per turn, you can send one speed rate tuner monster from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard. And for the rest of the turn, either increase or decrease the pendulum scale of this card by the original level of that sent monster, minimum one. So it's already got a pendulum scale of three. And that's really good. You have that option to increase or decrease. And then its monster effects are, uh, you can only special summon one of them per turn via the method written on its first effect. So if neither player controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. When this card is tribute summoned, you get to target one level four or lower speed red monster in graveyard and special summon it, which that, that makes the card super, super good. And the third effect is your opponent cannot target other speed red monsters for attack. So it's got a lot of awesome effects. That third effect is pretty decent. Uh, you know that there are a lot of different cards where, like, mid-combo, mid your opponent's like, oh, I'm going to flip it face down, ghost, fairy tale. There's a lot of other cards that, like, target something, disrupt your combos. So maybe you can go for this card just to protect all of your stuff, go for your boss monster, and then you'll be okay. Because, you know, if you synchro up for something that's going to be something where it's like you can't target it anyways, then, you know, it's irrelevant that you're not bringing out a speedrun monster because that monster can protect itself. So... I think it's a pretty decent card, although, yeah, like I said, it's a jump card, so that means we might not get it for quite some time here in the TCG. But the next thing up we're going to be taking a look at is the Million Dragon Mech. It's a new level uh, 9 Synchro Monster. It requires one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. 2700 attack reminds me of Trishula, although it has an easier summoning requirement because Trishula requires two monsters, but... Nonetheless, its effect is once per turn you get to banish one tuner monster from your hand or a graveyard, then target one card on the field, destroy it. If this synchro summon card is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished tuner monsters and add it to your hand. Hey, that's a pretty decent little effect, but I don't know, like, Trish is still the best level 9. I know technically that it does require one less monster to make, so maybe some obscure decks can make use of it. I just feel like it's kind of mediocre uh, because it's not once per turn during either player's turn, so that's already like minus. Uh, and I, I just feel like it's kind of lackluster. Like, if it had the effect where you can get its effect once per turn during either player's turn, okay, that's pretty decent, right? Uh, but the problem is it doesn't have that. And then on top of it, it has to be destroyed by a card effect. It should be like when this card leaves the field. Then we're looking at it to be much better. And then you have to target a card so it targets, because Trish, you know, much better in that aspect. It, it, it's not as good at all because Trish doesn't target, which makes it so much better. And then uh, it's target one card and destroy it, not banish it. I don't know. I feel like Trish outclasses this on so many levels. Uh, let me know guys, what deck can make use of this that can't make use of Trish? Because I feel like most level 9 synchro decks, you don't need it. Like, most of the toolbox-ish decks, uh, especially with like, you know, the lawn mowing next door coming out in the game, I feel like most people are going to have access to Globe Bowl plus 2 level 4s and it's just really easy. You know, Fairy Tail Globe Bulb and like a Mizuki banish to summon another card. Like, it, it's just not the best card. But let me know guys if you feel like any decks can really make good use of it. Because maybe there's a, a deck that can really just make this card really, really easy and then therefore it's much more viable. But next up, this is the upcoming Shonen Jump promo card. It's the Ares Persona Dragon. So if any of you guys are interested in that, um, actually, let's confirm. Let's see what is this. Uh, confirmed in the podcast. But let's go ahead and go over its effect really quick. Uh, so anyways, it is a dark pendulum with a scale of 1. I like that scale of 1. Uh, its pendulum effect is once per turn during the end phase. If your opponent activated a card or effect this turn that targets exactly one odd ice pendulum monster you control and no other cards, while this card was in your pendulum zone, you could just special summon this card. If you do, you could place one face-up odd ice pendulum monster from your extra deck in your pendulum zone, except for odd ice persona dragon. Then its monster effect is once per turn during either player's turn, you get to target one face-up monster on the field that was special summoned from the extra deck. It it has its effect negated until the end of this turn. It's an okay card. I like that it has a scale of one. There's not too many cards that just have a natural scale of one. Some of them, like, you can change. But overall, it's a pretty decent card for some of you collectors. I want to say more than anything. Uh, but next up, we have... Okay, a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about this, and you wanted my opinion on, like, what do I think of the name of a card? Honestly, guys, I don't care too much about the name, uh, except for when it comes to cards like uh, the uh, So Cute Boss. Hold on, let me, let me pull up this card. This is a really good pun. Hold on. 
Uh, there's this card called Ghost Trick Suck. Uh, it's supposed to be a succubus, right? But they changed it to So Cute Boss. I like that pun. This one's called Totally Awesome because it's a toad and it's the new frog card that's really, uh, really good. Uh, I made a video a while ago called Ice Barrier Frogs and uh, it, it's actually not that bad of an attack. I don't think it like that build with Ice Barriers is meta, so to speak, but it was just more trollsy than anything and it's going to be a really good card. Apparently, it's also going to be a secret rare, so any of you budget players, I'm sorry, man. Uh, enjoy the very expensive deck. Uh, there's a lot of different builds that run this. Heck, a lot of Mermel decks, there's uh, Deep Sea, uh, uh, the card that brings out like all the waters. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of innovation that people try with this, but honestly guys, there's been arguments of like, this is going to be the best deck, that's why it's secret. I feel like ABC just outclasses it, because if you have a CDI, you, you completely shut down this deck. And the uh, the thing with CDI is it's such a consistent deck versus some of these obscure decks that run the ancient CD, uh, C, C Deep King or King whatever that brings out the other cards. Those are just less consistent than uh, ABC. That's the way I see it. But uh, as far as the name goes, I, I, you guys can say the name is cringy, the name is really stupid. I just, you guys want my opinion on it, and I don't really care too much about the names, it's just all about the effects. But anyways, next up we have the other Spiral card that I don't think I covered, so it's Spiral Mission Assault. Now this card came out a few days ago, uh, or it got leaked, or it was actually, actually I think Konami actually posted it, because I always write the sample over the cards. But anyways, Spiral Mission Assault, so... It's a continuous spell card that says destroy this card during your third end phase after activation. Once per turn, if a spiral monster you control destroys a monster by battle, or if you destroy a card or cards on the field with a spiral monster's effect you control, you can draw a card. You can banish the card from your graveyard to special summon one spiral monster from your hand. So it's got a lot of uh, defense. I like that ability to, you know, if your play goes south, you can just go ahead and banish it and summon another thing, and then destroys itself. Therefore, uh, you can. Uh, get an extra free card. Uh, and then you get that extra draws. I like that ability. And it doesn't say you can only use this effect of it once per turn. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's got a little bit of potential. I know that there are cards that skip your certain phases. Um, I don't know if anyone's like, I know there's like Solomon's Law Book skips like your second standby phase or next standby. There's a, there's a lot of cards that can skip certain phases. I'm sure that if someone really wanted to, they could probably somehow skip like that turn or something so it doesn't get destroyed. It's pretty much irrelevant. Uh, you guys let me know if there's a card that does that. I know that there's one that skips like your standby phase, but this is end phase. I'm, like I said, I'm sure there's a card. You let me know down below what that card is, uh, if there is one that is like on the end phase. But nonetheless, uh, I think it's an okay card. It definitely is more support for the spirals. Uh, but next up, we have another Predator Plant card. So this is Predator Plant Terothnethes? Uh, is that like, it's like a pterodactyl, I think. I'm probably mispronouncing it. But anyways, it's a level 3 dark plant type monster with 300 attacks. So it's not going to get over anything but 2100 defense. But when it inflicts battle damage to your opponent, gets a target one face up monster your opponent controls, place one predator plant counter on it. At a level 2 or higher monster with a predator counter becomes level 1. So it helps you with some of your fusions. Maybe you can like synchro later on. But those are just more stuff for the predator plants. And then once per turn you get to target one monster your opponent controls. Whose level is the same or less than this card's. Uh, gain control of that monster until the end phase. So I think that that's pretty good. You're able to steal something. Now what would make this card much much better. If it was a tuner. Um, because then you could like do a lot more with it. Uh, but you guys let me know what your thoughts are on this. Also wanted to make this little quick announcement for any of you Yu-Gi-Oh fans that are interested in the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Dark Side of Dimensions. They're still holding a voiceover contest. I know that they've done this for a while, so maybe they still haven't found the right person. But anyways, it says Yu-Gi-Oh fans, get ready to use your voice. 4K Media, okay, so uh, basically all it really comes down to is uh, there's the movie's coming out uh, next year. And um, they're holding a voiceover contest at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Champion Series in Minneapolis. And uh, the voiceover contest uh, will give the fans the opportunity. Okay, so anyways, the important information for any of you guys attending this and want to actually uh, maybe have your voice in the movie, which is, I think, kind of cool that they're letting the fans do that. But anyways, uh, the voiceover contest will be held on October 15th and 16th. Uh, at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series at this location, Hall D-13. 01 2nd Avenue South Minneapolis and there's the address and everything like that and then here are the times guys for any of you guys again that are interested in it so it's Saturday October 15th and Sunday October 16th and then they give you the times and I'll, I'll link this down below if you guys want to read like everything but I'm just not going to go over everything but there is something also that I want to mention so WTB La 
Gaming is actually going to be streaming the World Championship Qualifier Regionals, which is the Fredericksburg one at VA. So uh, October 23rd at 12 p.m. actually it shows off in this video, which is really cool. Uh, I, I don't know how they got permission to do this, but that's really cool for any of you guys uh, interested in watching a regional qualifier live stream. Uh, really awesome stuff to be able to see like your competitive Yu-Gi-Oh actually, you know, recorded because sometimes they don't stream these and sometimes as YouTubers they don't let you record. So if you guys want to go ahead, make sure you guys go to their channel and sub Arena to them so you guys can watch the regional qualifier live. And that's going to be at 12 p.m. on October 23rd. It's, yeah, just sub to them so you guys will see it. Uh, I'll, I'll probably hop in to see what people are playing. And I want to know how the heck they got permission to do that because yeah, he hit me up and he's like, yeah, I'm going to be live streaming this. That's awesome, man. But uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, check them out, guys. And uh, yeah, October 23rd at 12 p.m. But anyways, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the vid. If you did, make sure you guys get a like button, a titty slap, and let me know what you're excited most about as far as the cards. I think this is going to open up a lot of in innovation. Like, people are going to try stuff. Uh, I don't really feel like this card is a replacement for Trish. But uh, I'm interested to see what speedroids also get. Because as of right now, there's no one really just playing a speedroid core heavy deck. It's a lot of people just... Um, Put like Terra Top and like these other cards in other decks and it just makes them good, you know what I mean? But anyways, thanks for watching guys, and I'm signing out.